Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In your dissection of the hard and soft palate, we should realize, especially in this individual, that we are faced with an edentulous ridge. The importance in comparing this particular specimen with others is that we normally will have a considerably larger ridge in this region. The alveolar bone and atrophy has been extensive in this region. Anteriorly, when considering the features of the hard palate, we want to recall again the contents then of the incisive canal enter the palate at this point. One can reflect a flap anteriorly and in this particular specimen that what is left of the arterial supply is a, at best minimal but this is in fact a portion of the arterial supply to the anterior palate. Posteriorly it's a much more representative specimen um, and it's an important feature in this region to keep in mind the entrance point then for the greater palatine nerve. It's an important feature in terms of the an anesthesia of this area. A flap through the mucous membrane in this region will point out to you that in fact the bony palate has a different conformation to it than does the mucous membrane. The palatal glands which are very heavy in this region will make it a bit difficult to reflect, but once this flap is reflected, we can see that in fact there's a right angle here in the hard palate horizontal portion as it shifts to the more vertical alveolar bone in this area. Here again we can locate the greater palatine artery and nerve, a crest of bone passing here and separating this foramen from a second foramen the lesser palatine foramen. These are then features of the hard palate that you'll want to identify. Here's its posterior extent then and the posterior nasal spine again located at this point in bone. If we consider now the features of the soft palate, we need to dissect away a large number of mucus glands and you can see here in cross section of the soft palate extending down here that the muscular portion is basically dorsal or superior in this area and we can see here many many mucus glands. These glands must be dissected away while following muscles into the soft palate to see how they make it up. Now we have done that in this next specimen that I would like to show you. Here we have again the hard palate leading to the soft palate and the muscles of this region are well de demonstrated in this particular specimen. The levator in this region can be located as you remove the muscles and follow them into the palate. It's best to follow them from the peripheral extent into the palate rather than trying to go into this area of muscular mixing and trying to determine ways to pass peripherally. Here, for example, is a beautiful extent of a palatopharyngeus muscle and its relationship here, the superior pharyngeal constrictor passing in in this region. Um, as you continue your dissection then of the soft palate, you will want to identify the cut ends of muscle in this point of the levator and passing over the dorsum of that, the longitudinally oriented fibers of the uvularis muscle. If we look at the inferior aspect of the palate, one final feature that you can see here anteriorly passing from the palate down to the base of the tongue is the palatoglossus muscle, palatopharyngeus again being shown here. There is one other feature of this region that you should be recalling, and that is that we have not discussed the tensor villi palatini muscle. To locate it, I'd like you to refer to the half head in which we examined the lateral pharyngeal wall, and we'll demonstrate that now. In this particular specimen, we have done that, 
And let's look at the lateral wall. And for your orientation in this region, the ear is here, the zygomatic arch is in this region, remaining portion of mandible here. The area that we're interested in then is in the infratemporal fossa, and the muscle that we want to examine then is the tensor villi palatini. Features that you can see here then, we have the hamulus, the broken portion then of the lateral pterygoid plate, and the tensor then I want you to identify and follow into the palatal region, in this region. Now we've cut away this portion of the lateral pharyngeal wall just to show the continuity. Now we'll turn this over and consider then that in the construction of the palate, the tensor, and I'd like to at this point pin back this mucosal flap of the palate, to expose its landmarks. Here again, on the oral aspect of the palate, we can identify the hamulus. The tensor is passing between then the hamulus here, which is the portion of the medial pterygoid plate. Lateral pterygoid plate, you should identify lateral to it here. Here is the tensor, and we can see it's cleaned up so that it shows the spray of the aponeurosis of the palate and the, in fact, insertion of the tensor into the mass of the soft palate. You'll notice here the muscles of the soft palate then inserting on the superior aspect of this aponeurosis. This then completes the consideration of the soft palate in this area, however, it does extend inferiorly into the area of the tonster fossa, which has been demonstrated on our next specimen here on the other side. Again, now for orientation, we have our soft palate in this region, hard palate, tongue. The tonster fossa is, in fact, a triangular fossa. And to identify it, we need to identify base of the tongue, palatoglossus, palatopharyngeus, and then we're now looking at the base of this fossa. What we have done is to remove then the mucous membrane overlying muscle fibers of the superior pharyngeal constrictor, which are demonstrated here, passing to their connection with the buccinator in this region. Now, if we pass back into the fossa and follow the fibers of the superior pharyngeal constrictor inferiorly, at its inferior edge, we can identify a nerve. And that then is the ninth cranial nerve. In addition to that feature, you should be careful to identify and distinguish between the nerve and another structure in this area that looks somewhat like a nerve. Here we have it here. It runs to the hyoid bone. It is the stylohyoid ligament. It is an attachment for then the middle constrictor fibers. We can see those constrictor fibers passing out in this direction. And finally, lying deep and attached to the hyoid are the fi fibers then of the hyoglossus muscle. These are features then of the tonsillar fossa that should be considered in your dissection. The blood supply and details of this region should be worked out by you, but these are the landmarks that you will be working from. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.